In 2012, league legends Brad Fittler and Andrew Johns were asked to participate in a series of rugby league clinics in the small Pacific Island nation of Fiji. Along with rugby league talent scout Joel Gregg, the group funded the trip largely themselves, along with some assistance from the Intercontinental Hotel in Natadola. In what began as an opportunity to give back to a region which had given so much to rugby league, became the start of an incredible journey for a young Fijian that would take him all the way to the NRL. This is Footy for Fiji, the Edo Nabuli story. I always knew when you look at the footy at the moment in the NRL, there's so many Islanders there. And I just knew we weren't doing a good enough job over there, so I thought, the best thing to do is go over there, have a look ourselves, and more to find out what's going on there and the quality and um, how come we haven't got more Fijians coming through given, you know, two of our best players in the last 20 years, Jared Hayne and Petro Sivanasiva, one's a front rower and one's a fullback. You know, why we haven't got more of these players? I didn't know what to expect. Um, we both took our families. I thought it was important to take our children over to see uh, how uh, people over there, how different people uh, have, have their life and how lucky they are over here. Uh, and then we went, ar went around to a lot of the villages. For, for me personally, the thing I was looking forward to was going back to Aquila Uate's village, who plays for the Newcastle Knights and has played for Australia now, and is a proud Fijian. Uh, that was a real eye-opener for me to see where his humbling beginnings, where he's come from in his village. We got to meet his mother and went into his house, went to his bedroom. You know, for me that was a real highlight, but just to go around and to see how pure they are with their ball skills, you know, that they sometimes don't even have a footy, but they're playing with a coconut or, or whatever they're playing with, but they just love the game. What's it like having the boys over here? Yeah, good, good. It's, it's really big boost for the young boys. You see the boys that respond they have for the, for the, for Freddie and uh, Andrew to be here, it's, I think it's a big boost for, for our local boys here in Freddie. Yeah, bend the back. You have great hands, great touch. A couple of times diving inside corner posts. All that stuff comes really natural. You see the, the ones that listen, they adapt really quick. They're obviously, when they grow up in villages, they, they just play games the whole time. So, you know, competition they really enjoy. And the ones that listen, you can tell, just pick it up like that. And that's, they're the ones you have to look for. Well, athletically, they're just, they're without peer. They're, they're I don't know, they're, they're a different shape to the other Pacific Island. You know, I've been to Samoa surfing in these places and, and those guys are really shorter and, and really nuggety and strong. Where the Fijians tend to be tall and real athletic. I think that's where if you go over the last 20 years of the NRL, we've had some great wingers and centers who have been Fijians and they're tall, they're athletic uh, and they run beautifully. They're beautiful athletes. I think they're made for, for rugby league and the difference between rugby league and rugby union is in, in rugby league we are separated by about 10 to 15 metres so you have so much more room to move and to show your, your skills and, and how quick and evasive you are. If you look at all the NRL clubs now they come to Fiji and look for, for the next Marika and the yeah. next Lotte and the next Petro. That's what we're trying to develop here, for, especially in our secondary school competition. We're progressing slowly from four schools now to 25 schools, from two zones in our uh, in a comp local competition to seven zones now. We've seen the growth of rugby league. Now this year, we, we, we was wondering because the people of Fonua live, the other the, the large island of Fiji, they want rugby league to come over there. People of uh, Levuka, the other island, they want rugby league to come. People from Meshaw, they want rugby league to come. So it's, it's growing. So it's a big thing for, especially for us here in Fiji in the, in, the, in the second school competition. You can tell from early that games they play in their villages, they just pick the ball up so easy. Passing through the legs and stuff just becomes second nature after they tried it. It's, uh, yeah, for our type of sport, especially when they grow, they can grow big and tall. It just works. Yeah, Joel was talking about young guy that works here, he said he's a phenomenal athlete, trying to get him out to the Tigers and then 
I spotted him today in the front of the hotel. Wait to see him. Tony, Tony, Brett. You play rugby union or rugby league? Rugby union. Rugby union. Rugby league now, mate. Rugby league now. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that we come across Ete when we got out of our minivan and there's this six foot five strapping athlete standing in front of us was just, it was an absolute sight to behold really and he had this big smile and within a minute I could just tell he had the confidence to really do whatever he put his mind to. Yeah, and first impressions were, were incredible. I don't know, you just, sometimes you just know, something goes off, a spark or something. And I looked at this guy, I couldn't believe what an athlete he was. And uh, he's got something about him. You know, he had this smile about him, and I knew he had something going on. There was something there. On the day they saw me, I was walking at the hotel. I was driving back the buggy down and at the main lobby. And uh, they saw me when I stood up the buggy and I was so tall. And uh, they asked me, do you play footy? I said, yeah, I play footy. Do you ever play league? I said, ah, no, I just play union. I could see the way he held himself. I could see the way he walked. I could see the way he talked to people. I could see the way people gravitated towards him that he had that special knack and he had a gift. And it doesn't matter where you grow up, you, know, you can grow up in Sydney, you can grow up you know, in Queensland, or you can grow up in a little village in Fiji. Some guys have got it and some haven't. He's got it. And I just knew straight away. When I was growing up, I was interested in league, so, but for me, I play union there. And so coming over here, it was the first time for me to play league, so it's more interesting for me. Go, get there, get there. Up next, Edo arrives in Sydney, conquering fears and realising dreams as an NRL contract awaits.